Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 43rd episode in our AINU podcast series. Today is Friday, February 26, 2021, and I'm your host, Fikhar Saidi. I'm a computer scientist, an engineer, a lecturer, and a consultant. I'm also the author of several books. My most recent book is about artificial intelligence and is titled The Genome Affair. The Genome Affair is a speculative work. It examines what the world might be like if some of the more extraordinary capabilities forecast to be realized in AI over the next 20 to 30 years were actually realized today. Given the growing list of frightening existential threats humankind now faces, the book pays particular attention to the impact AI is expected to have on world affairs. The book is available in ebook format for those who prefer to read on a digital device, but it's also available in a high quality paperback edition. The Genome Affair is available on Amazon, so I hope you'll take the time to read it and to leave a review. Amazon book reviews are very helpful for writers. I'm very interested in how science and technology influence world affairs and the big questions facing humankind. Studying at the confluence of the great disciplines of human history, political science and thought, international affairs, science and technology offers a deep understanding and pedagogically important lessons of how important advances in human endeavor have influenced and impacted civilization. I'm available to give talks on artificial intelligence and its related technologies, and on the impact AI is expected to have, or is already having, on our world. If you'd like to get in touch with me to to arrange a web-based event or consulting meeting with your company or organization, You can find my contact info in the podcast notes below. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it with others if you find the content valuable. Thank you. And now, on to today's podcast. In our last podcast, episode 42, I spoke about AI and other fourth industrial revolution technologies might mean for the future of democracy. In today's podcast, episode 43, I'll talk about some fascinating examples of how artificial intelligence is impacting the life sciences. Let's get started. The application of artificial intelligence in the life sciences is one of the most exciting areas in which AI can and is having a profound impact. This is because AI has the potential to improve the quality of life and health outcomes for millions or even billions of ordinary people across the globe. AI can compensate for key shortages of highly trained medical staff, thus dramatically improving healthcare access. It can also constantly monitor human biometrics and thus alert the individual and their health system at the very first sign of emerging pathology. Artificial intelligence is also capable of processing volumes of medical data that for for humans remains incomprehensible, and AI can complete this processing in a matter of seconds. This process can potentially identify patterns that can predict the onset of various pathologies along a timeline in which they can be quickly contained and before any significant harm has been done to patient health. This will improve the quality of life for patients around the world who may have previously lacked healthcare access, and it will also reduce costs for financially stressed health systems throughout both the developing and developed world. One important area where artificial intelligence is playing just such a role is in the medical field of radiology. For the past several years, researchers at Stanford University's Department of Computer Science have been working on a fascinating application of deep learning neural networks in the area of radiology. 
They have developed an AI agent that can identify pathology in x-rays. The researchers used a set of 100,000 x-rays they received from the National Institutes of Health. Some charts had no pathology, while others did present some pathology. The NIH also provided comprehensive information regarding the nature of the pathology. The Stanford AI application was trained on these 100,000 charts and was then tested by showing it new charts. The tests demonstrated that the AI was accurate 33% of the time, whereas radiologists trained at Stanford Medical School were accurate 95% of the time. The researchers obtained a second data set of 200,000 additional x-rays from Stanford University's medical school and continued to train the AI application with this new data set. The AI application is now 98% accurate in identifying pathology in the x-rays along with the nature of the disease. If we think about all the rural and urban communities in the developing world or in the numerous conflict zones where the need for effective diagnosis exists, an AI application like the one from Stanford will be of inestimable value. There may now be diagnostic imaging equipment available in some of these distant communities, but it's unlikely that they will have radiologists available with the capacity or skill to effectively read so many diagnostic images. In fact, the sad reality is that amongst the world's population of 7.5 billion, only 2 billion have access to medical imaging and subsequent professional diagnosis. The godfather of deep learning, Jeff Hinton at the University of Toronto, along with his protégés Yashua Bengio at the University of Montreal and Jan Lucan at NYU, believe that we should stop training so many radiologists, because within five years, AI will be so superior to humans in, detect in detecting and diagnosing disease that radiologists will be used in a different way in the medical field. Scientists at Stanford agree with Hinton, but radiologists at the University of Chicago Medical School believe that such claims are exaggerated. Nevertheless, there are currently only 38,000 radiologists practicing in the United States, and these new AI radiology agents take just 46 seconds to read, identify, and assess pathology in the same volume of images that these highly trained and experienced radiologists can do in two days. Hence, the ability of artificial intelligence agents, such as the one from Stanford, is very likely to lower the cost of radiology services while also providing very rapid analysis. Such AI agents will also make these services much more accessible to underserved communities around the world. Another exciting, albeit futuristic, application of artificial intelligence in the life sciences is in the field of connectomics. Aurora 21 is a supercomputer being developed by the United States Department of Energy at Argonne National Labs in suburban Chicago. The Department of Energy is collaborating with Intel, IBM, and others in building America's first exascale computer that can simultaneously process a quintillion instructions. That's 10 raised to the power of 18. When completed, the Aurora 21 machine will occupy a quarter acre of physical space and will be the world's fastest supercomputer. A key application for this state-of-the-art machine will be in the science of connectomics. Aurora 21 and the Connect Connectomics Project will work to map the 85 billion or so neurons in the human brain, along with the synaptic links between each of these neurons into silicon. Once the human neural network, the interconnected neuronal pathways of the brain, are mapped, then, in theory, it is essentially preserved indefinitely this may be one of the greatest achievements in the history of scientific discovery. 
Although connectomics research is still in early stages and requires computational ability that can easily consume all available computing resources currently available on the planet, the implications of such a mapping are profound. It may yet take four to eight decades, but once we succeed, we will have essentially extricated the human mind from its biochemical host and preserved it indefinitely in silicon-based memory chips and processors. Then, each mind may have the potential to live on indefinitely. We have yet to understand the implications for succeeding in such an unsettling task, but much like the CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technique pioneered by Jennifer Doudna of the University of California, Berkeley, and Emmanuel Charpentier of Max Planck in Berlin, and recently recognized by the Nobel Committee in 2020, there are many ethical and philosophical questions that we will need to consider. We do not understand the place or role of the human conscience as we move forward in this extrication of the human mind from its biochemical host. For example, will the conscience automatically transfer during this extrication process or not? And this will lead to tremendous controversy, ethical debate, and cause for regulation, much like we are currently experiencing in the field of gene editing or germline editing. Ethical and philosophical challenges notwithstanding, the potential for progress in such extrication and transplantation, or transhumanism to silicon, is staggering. So many of the ideas that have frustrated human minds for centuries suddenly become plausible and feasible. For example, the content of our mind, that is, our thoughts and ideas, our memories and personality, and even our conscience, this can readily and easily move from place to place, not simply on Earth, but across the universe and at light speed. This scientific and technological path makes mass Earth and space travel realistic for the first time in human history, while simultaneously disturbing the path of evolutionary biology with this alternative and profound path of intelligent design. In fact, the more we think about it, we find the possibilities resulting from connectomics are endless. At this point, you might be thinking that this is just science fiction. But in fact, nothing we are discussing is contradicted by the laws of physics, according to professor and theoretical physicist Michio Kaku at the City University of New York. We are now capable of exploring the universe as pure consciousness, traveling when needed at the speed of light, and then embodied in avatars or exoskeletons once at our destination. Of course, this does call into question what it really means to be human anymore, and we are uncertain about the consequences of embarking upon the connectomics and transhumanism trajectory, even though we are scientifically convinced that through silicon, and artificial intelligence algorithms, we can potentially preserve human consciousness, memories, personalities, and thoughts indefinitely. Although we may be 50 years from rudimentary capability in these revolutionary sciences, by the end of the century, we may have realistic abilities for such preservation of human life or human minds. But what might we get wrong along this journey, and what might the consequences of these mistakes be? We are interrupting evolutionary biology. Is this a step forward for humankind, or is it some form of an escape? These are questions that remain to be answered as Aurora 21 and other quantum and supercomputers enabled by artificial intelligence unlock the secrets of the human mind in the coming decades. Thank you for spending some time with me. I'm trying to follow the TED Talk format, and so I'm keeping these podcasts under 20 minutes. Let me know what you think. I hope you'll find these insights into artificial intelligence helpful, and I hope you'll read my new book, The Genome Affair, 
it's on Amazon. Until next time, then, this has been the AI and You podcast with author Vikar Saidi.